Hi everyone. So for those of you who don't know me and my work, I'm Susie Byler and the title I use for myself is Spiritual Guide because it is my mission to guide people back to their soul, guide people back to their own wisdom and knowing of themselves. And so recently I was inspired to watch the Teal Swan doc documentary, The Deep End. If you haven't seen it, uh, you might want to watch it. Uh, and I felt like I really wanted to offer a review on that documentary for the purpose of hopefully helping you to give uh, to acquire some discernment for yourself. And so my objective here is to do my best to stay in a neutral space. I do have opinions on certain things that I'll share with you, uh, but to come from a, a neutral space of non-judgment and to help you discern when you're looking for a spiritual teacher or a spiritual guide to help you discern uh, what you want to look for and what you wh whom you want to guide you so there are four episodes in this documentary for those of you who haven't seen it and i've got four pages of notes so one page for each episode Oh, so a few disclaimers. I've never met Teal. I've never been to one of her retreats. I've never engaged with her material and content. Um, I, in fact, I have in the past tried to watch some videos because people would ask me, well, what do you think of this video that Teal Swan has presented? And, and I really couldn't watch the videos. One, because I generally don't uh, engage in other teachers' content because I'm committed to bringing through content from source, so I, I don't want to be influenced by other teachers and what they bring through. Uh, but more importantly, I just I couldn't watch her. I just couldn't watch her. So make of that what you will. Um, I do see in this documentary that the editing clearly has a defamatory slant. Uh, and so, you know, if you do decide to watch the documentary, if you haven't yet, just keep that in mind. And then I will also say, I see a lot of myself in her. Not a lot, but I do see myself, I, as I went through the documentary, I did see myself in her. And I just think that's important to acknowledge because none of us are perfect. And uh, we all have our faults and flaws and things to work on. And uh, and we all have our redeeming qualities, you know, and I, I saw both uh, in that regard as I was watching her. So uh I'm going to dive in the deep end because that's kind of how the documentary starts. So first of all, there is a critique of someone critiquing her work when she is in a, it looks like a conference or a, a large retreat. There's a woman with her on stage who is, you know, talking about, you know, maybe committing suicide or not sure why she's here on the planet. And, and Teal asks, why are you here on this planet? And this person reviewing that was saying this is a critique to ask that kind of question. And in my mind, I think that's a legitimate question. Um, and then when you look at the response of the woman who was asked that question and the breakthrough that she appears to have had, you know, she has tears, she has a smile. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why that's a critique to ask someone why you are here on the planet? I ask myself that question all the time and it doesn't have anything to do with suicide for me. I like to ask other people that question too, you know, and maybe because, maybe it's a cr critique because it was in the context of someone who is, you know, not wanting to be here and to be asked that kind of question might be too confrontive. I, I don't know. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate about this documentary is you get to see some of Teal's emotion. When I would try to watch her videos, her eyes just look so empty to me and, and so void of human emotion. It was, it was eerie. Uh, so it's nice, at least in this documentary, that you get to see some what appears to be genuine emotion from Teal. I'm um, curious about her claims of her IQ. The documentary actually doesn't cover this, but there was a critique of her uh, that said she claims her IQ is over 170. And uh, 
I'm so curious if those claims have been substantiated. So that's just sort of a, a bunny trail, but uh, something to consider when someone makes lofty claims like that. You know, I remember uh, the whole thing with Bentinho and how he claimed he could, you know, change the weather and all of these things, and, and that was never substantiated. Uh, so just something to look out for when, when, when big claims are made. Uh, really question that if, if someone's making huge claims like that. All right. <laughs> so this is at the beginning of the documentary, and she says, this is a quote, if you want to come within 50 miles of me, you better be ready for the deepest end of the pool. <sighs> when I heard her say this, there was just a little red flag, um, but also some <sighs> feelings of this is where I see myself in her, because in some ways I feel that way about my work because I go deep with clients, but I don't make those kinds of generalized statements like, you, if you're going to come within 50 miles of me, you better go to the deepest end of the pool. Now, you can interact with me and not have to go to the deepest end of the pool. Like, that's okay in my world. I prefer to go to the deep end of the pool. That is absolutely my preference. And if you want to be a client who's coming for transformation, then that is going to be required of you. Uh, but that was that was kind of my first red flag. And then I will get into that a little deeper later because it leads into other, other things, other ways that she says things. Okay. So one of the concerns I had is just the the way she does her work with retreat attendees and clients. Uh, there's a scene shown in the movie, in the documentary where there's a woman going through something and Teal's nowhere to be seen. And I don't know if that's edited out. I don't know if she's actually standing close by, but it appeared to be that people had paired off and gone into different rooms. And maybe these people came to retreat to be certified in her completion process. Uh, we don't really get that information in the documentary. So uh, it's very unclear. It's a little unclear what was happening there, but uh, basically what they were having this woman do was relive her past trauma. And for the facilitator of the retreat not to be anywhere around, that's that's a red flag for me that's concerning. So again, that could be have that could have been lost in editing. We don't really know. Okay, the next part uh, that I wanted to highlight is where she talks about uh, when you heal your trauma, it's like a puzzle piece going back into place. And this happens when you confront uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. And this is something that I resonated with because I talk about integrating soul aspects. And that's where from your uh, perspective of your multidimensional self, you look at your shadow, you look at your light, you confront those parts of yourself and you integrate them and it, and it feels like a puzzle piece clicking back into place. And so when she said that, I, I resonated with that. Okay, so <laughs> this is where the red flag started happening for me. Uh, there was a, a retreat and this gentleman named Simon challenged her and she could not receive the challenge and she immediately turned it back on him and this is 33, 23 minutes into the documentary. She immediately turned it back on him. Um, she made some kind of BS analogy. And my conclusion was, wow, this woman's a master of deflection. It was, it was amazing to watch. And again, things could be happening in editing that we're not seeing. So I give a little bit of a, a buffer there. Uh, but it's really remarkable how she didn't take in anything that he was saying turned it back onto him, made it his problem, his issue. It, it was mind blowing. So I don't know how much could have been done in editing in that regard, but uh, it certainly was, you know, I just sat there like, wow, <laughs> this, this woman's very masterful. Uh, okay, one of the things that she's criticized for is uh, her claims that she can hear other people's thoughts and emotions. And I just want to put that out there that lots of people can do that and it's not that big of a deal. It's not like some big skill or some special talent. 
Uh, a lot of people are clairsentient, clairaudient, clairvoyant. If you live in my world, you know, you're surrounded by that. So I'm just like, whatever, that's not a criticism. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, I do want to say I feel compassion for all that she's been through. Clearly, she's been through a lot. Clearly, uh, she's been deeply, deeply wounded and traumatized. And I think that comes through. I mean, she's been through 13 relationships in the past uh, 15, 20 years, five marriages. Uh, if I want to learn from someone, I want to learn from someone who has some success in what they're teaching. Now, she's not claiming to be a relationship guru, so at least there's that. But uh, if she's going to be a spiritual teacher for me, I want to see her be in a successful long-term relationship if she chooses to part if she chooses to, you know, do that with her life. If she chooses to partner with somebody, I want to see some longevity there cuz if the skills and tools she's teaching aren't working for herself, how am I going to really expect them to work for me? So that is a pretty significant red flag all the relationships she's been through. Okay, and then at 37 minutes in the first episode, uh, I think, gosh, I didn't take good enough notes. I think she was talking to uh, her ex-partner, Blake, and she doesn't let him speak. Uh, he was, he was about to speak his creations and she just completely cuts him off. Uh, and you begin to see this pattern that, uh, her relationships are about her. Her mission is about her. Her business is about her. Like everything is teal centric. Um, so my red flags start to build. <laughs> All right. Um, there's a criticism that she attracts uh, vulnerable, wounded people. And for me, that's not really a criticism. It's like, well, duh, that's who she's here to help. You know, she's been through that. She, you know, seemingly maybe has had some healing and success for herself. So, yeah, she's going to attract wounded, vulnerable people because that's who she's here to help. So I don't really see that as a, a criticism. Um, I do think there's extra responsibility involved with that. You know, as a practitioner, I attract people who have deep wounds. That just means I have more responsibility in how I help them. Um, but that's, you know, those are the people I'm here to serve. So you know, it's like, how can that be a criticism? So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. All right. Is she a narcissist? <laughs> Everybody wants to know, is Teal Swan a narcissist? You know what, you guys? I am not a licensed therapist. Uh, I am not qualified to make diagnoses like that. So my best thing that I can tell you is watch this documentary, watch some of her videos, and you discern for yourself. Does it matter if she's a narcissist? Uh, yeah, if she's a spiritual teacher and a guide, then it matters. Um, otherwise, like, what is this obsession with being a narcissist? All right, that's all I have to say about that. All right, episode two. And then I wonder, is she human? You know, there are some claims that she says she's, you know, only part human or whatever. And it's like, okay, again, if you're in my world, you you uh, hear about all the galactic races. Maybe you've been activated by some of them. Maybe you feel like you are part of some of those races. For me, it's not a big deal. Like, I am all about being human. I'm very human-centric. I'm about embracing, accepting my humanity. Um, so... <sighs> This claim that she makes she's part human, like, whatever. We we all are. We all come from the stars, you know? Like, no big deal. Get over yourself. All right. <laughs> uh, you, you get an example of Teal's intense personality six minutes into episode two, where she's having an intense discussion with a new member of the inner circle, Juliana. Juliana is someone who came in as uh, Blake's partner and Blake was Teal's ex-partner. Uh, so the, you start to see like some of the intensity of her personality. Uh, and this is, you know, to be honest, this is where I see some of myself and her. I have a very intense personality sometimes. I can be soft and gentle and compassionate, and I can also be really fiery and really, 
intense sometimes. So, uh, is that a criticism? Not necessarily, but it's just, it's an observation. It's an observation. How people interact in their inter interpersonal relationships says a lot about the person. And I am the first to admit fault because in my significant, in my partnership relationship, uh, sometimes I lose it, you know? Sometimes I legitimately lose my shit or I shut down or, you know, I just can't function as a human with this other human. And uh, it's because I'm really super vulnerable with him. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but in, in a situation like this, where you start to see how intense she is, it's like, whoa, what, why? Why is, is that intensity needed? Okay. When asked of Teal, why do people call you a cult leader? She says, and I quote, because they know it might scare people off me. And she says that kind of like with a knowingness, but also a question mark. And it's just another little tiny red flag of like, everything is about her. Uh, why is it important that people not be scared off her? You know, for me and my work, uh, if someone's not a match for me, great, go find another spiritual guide. Uh, I'm not attached. And if you have something bad to say about me, go ahead and say it. Like, I know who I am. So if you have some slander against me, it'd be nice if you come to me first and bring it to my attention. But, you know, if you have something to say about me that's not nice... I know who I am. I know what's true and what's not. So it, it's not something I give my energy to. So I, I find that very fast response from her interesting. Uh, it might scare people off me. Well, what does it matter if people are scared off you? Like, if they're not a match for your work, then they should be scared off you, right? That's how it works with spiritual teachers and clients. Like, that's how their relationship is. So I find that interesting. Okay, uh, so then there's uh, like this really short blip about a suicide video that she supposedly published. And I mean, not supposedly, she did. Uh, and in it, there is, she's basically visualizing and encouraging people to visualize their suicide. And, you know, we have to have context here. So if you want the full context, go watch the video. I did not watch it. But for me, it was enough just to... <sighs> Another red flag, because visualization is a creation technique. So even if you are not intending to commit suicide, visualizing your suicide is a creation technique. Visualizing is a creation technique. Because I'm all about creating and creation energies, hello, the creation temple, uh, if you're visualizing your suicide, you're putting thought forms, emotion, energy into the field, into the creation field. That's a big deal. Again, even if you don't intend to take any action, even if you don't intend to do anything about it, putting that kind of energy into the field, not a great idea. All right. So at one point, um, she's asking, and I'm not going to say the swear word because I don't want YouTube to flag me, but why the F do you think the universe put me in in front of... Oh, what? sorry, let me start over. Why the F do you think the universe put you in front of me if everything is fine? And she's asking this of a client or retreat attendee. And again, it's about her. Why do you think the universe put you in front of me? Instead of having it be about the client and what the, the participant is needing, she makes it about her. And I, like, I have a hard time with that. Uh, when I'm with a client in session, it's never about me, it's about my client. And sometimes I will share a personal story as a way of relating to the person or giving an example of what I've overcome. Uh, but it's not, the session is not about me. So I find it interesting how she just like does that subtle little twist to, to bring things to make things about her that really shouldn't be. 
So that begs that, you know, that narcissist question that people like to ask about her. All right. So then there's a part in episode two where a retreat participant, Amr, has, you know, confessed his sexual attraction to her and her reaction. <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite grok her reaction. She gets angry and pissed off. And look, you guys, I've been doing this over 17 years. I'm not a newbie here. I've been around the block a few times. I've had clients fall in love with me. There's a way to handle it. And it's not by getting angry. It just, it seemed so immature. That's what I'm going to say about that. All right. Uh, I just want to make a correction to 20 minutes, 28 minutes into episode two. She talks about channeling and what she's actually doing is mediumship, not channeling. I have seen some accusations about this part in the documentary and that like nothing's really happening there. It's not real. This is where I would invite you into your own discernment because I work with this stuff. So for me, it is very real. Um, I don't doubt that those people had a real experience. I don't doubt that they contacted this guy's mother. Um, you know, this is sort of my world. So for me, these things are very real. So I would just invite you to discern for yourself uh, if you think those things are real or if it's even important <laughs> to you to know. Uh, it may not even be important for you to know if it's real or not. Okay, um, it was stated towards the end of the episode that uh, it's important to make Teal's mission your mission. And this is just another instance of everything being Teal-centric. And then a guy named Jared, um, she's telling, I think it's in a retreat setting or something. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Okay. So this guy <laughs> had gone to Teal and... Um, was maybe part of her inner circle even, I don't remember. And she said, when he left, when he left, she said, if I were you, I'd go kill yourself. I'm sorry, a spiritual teacher, a spiritual guide does not say things like that. That's vindictive. It's immature. Massive red flag. Massive. This is where I cannot stay in a place of neutrality because you can't say things like that to people. If you want to be famous, if you want to be a leader, uh, if you want to truly help people and eliminate suffering like she claims she wants to, you can't claim that you want to eliminate suffering for people and then say, if I were you, I'd go kill yourself. Now this is, you know, secondhand information coming from him. We don't have that on camera. We don't have her saying that on camera. We have him retelling this. <sighs> <laughs> Big red flag. Okay. Episode three. All right. So um, it appears that they're doing some sort of constellation work, uh, family constellation work. If you're not familiar with that, it's where uh, in a group of people, different people in the group take on the roles of different members of your family. And then they actually start to feel things that your family members were feeling and then they retell that to you. So it appears to be something like that or very similar. Um, I think that can be very helpful work under the right practitioner, uh, but it also could be very easily distorted. So it could be dangerous in that regard. Uh, and then she's using combo with uh, one of her inner circle members, Gracia, I think her name was. And, um, you know, if you've been following me and my work, you know I'm not a big fan of using medicines like that. Combo, ayahuasca, cannabis, uh, these things open portals. Dangerous stuff can come through. You have to have a really, really solid practitioner to uh, hold space for those kinds of ceremonial, that you know, those kinds of ceremonies. And, uh, you know, after seeing two episodes, I don't know that I would trust Teal to do that. So, uh just something to think again about, again, using your own discernment. All right, at 19 minutes, she talks about how her life is so different. Uh, and it's just another example of everything being very teal-centric. And you start to see how she makes herself a victim in different circumstances. 
And, you know, it's hard for me to speak to this because I'm not famous. So I live a pretty normal life. Uh, maybe if I were famous, my life would be really different and, have, and I would have to protect myself more. I don't know. But I start to question, you know, has she really accepted her humanity? That's one of the questions that came up for me as I watched that. All right. And just to note, and this is just my kind of intuitive observation, but, you know, she claims that she wants to get people out of, suf out of suffering. And yet when you look at her sometimes, she looks so tortured. You know, not necessarily when she's on stage, but when the camera catches her and certain glimpses of her at certain times, she looks truly tortured. And, uh, you know... The wounded healer thing is real. I have it to some degree as well. And yet, I've gone through a lot of personal healing and I, I wouldn't consider myself tortured. Uh, I have my wounds, yeah, but I wouldn't consider myself wounded. Um, so, again, when you're looking for a spiritual practitioner, you want someone that has fairly, you want someone that's grounded, someone that's intact, you know, someone that has integrity. And I, I start to question her integrity at this point in, in the series. All right, at 25 minutes in, this is, oh gosh, more red flags. Um, she appears to just be totally ill-equipped as a facilitator. She doesn't own anything when challenged. And, and she says, I don't understand how to work with someone like that. And she's referring to someone who's talking about suicide, and, you know, just deeply resistant to the, her process. She says to this person, you're a confusing person playing these games with me. Once again, turns it around on herself, makes it about her. Uh, Teal, I have news for you. You're, you're here with a client. This is about your client, not about you. Playing games with you? No, this person is in pain. This is this is her defense mechanism to not have to confront her shadow. She's not playing games with you. Why are you making it personal about yourself? All right, get a little passionate here because this is where I feel like she's not equipped as a facilitator. She's not truly equipped to take someone through that deep pain. Uh, or maybe she is and maybe she's just forcing it. And that's something that comes up later in the episode uh, where she... She thinks it's okay to force people to do their their healing work. And uh, Juliana had challenged her on this, saying, you know, she's just not ready. And and Teal's like, no, oh, that's BS, you know, like we can we can make people do this work. And and no. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't force someone into healing if they're not ready. They come when they're ready. You know, and they might come thinking they're ready, but they're truly not. And as a practitioner, you need to know the difference. So this is where, you know, as a practitioner myself, I get a little passionate about this because you can never force someone to do their work. That's not how it works. It's always free will. Always, always, always free will. Maybe editing distorted it. You know, maybe there was some editing by the producers that made it look like something that it's not. I don't know. Again, I give a little buffer there. But if if it was portrayed accurately and this is truly what's happening, uh, you, <laughs> you can't force people to do the work. And um, this is another example where she doesn't own anything and she turns it around on the on the person. And uh, it, it's mind boggling to me as a spiritual teacher and practitioner, as a spiritual guide for myself. The, my first job is to heal myself. My first job is to take personal responsibility. Uh, if someone has feedback for me, something I need to look at, that's my number one. Only after looking at myself and healing myself can I help someone else. So it's just kind of shocking how she really doesn't take responsibility for anything. At least this is what we're, we're shown in the documentary. That might happen in her personal life away from the cameras. I really don't know. I can't say. Um, 32 minutes in. She makes herself a victim. Uh, again, as a spiritual leader and teacher, you can't do that. You know, you're not a victim of your clients. You're not a victim of your circumstances. You need to be a master if you're going to be a spiritual guide for somebody. You need, and if, or at least be on that mastery path. And um, I just don't see it. I just don't see it in this documentary. Again, maybe it's edited out. 
I don't know. All right, and then there's this big thing about uh, her inner circle and this document that was given this private investigator called non-negotiables. And it's very clear that Teal comes first in all circumstances. She's very protective of herself, her brand, and um, people can't be trusted. And it's a very victim, you know, energy about that. And, and I start to wonder, you know, what does she need protection from? What is she hiding? You know, I'm all about transparency. I think that's what we need on this planet right now for everyone to own their stuff, for everyone to be transparent and to, you know, the way she needs so much protection. Um, you know, I wonder about it. I wonder. Okay. Again, and then we start off in episode four. She's afraid of slander. Why? Why is she so afraid of slander? Uh, her image is clearly everything. Like, we have to maintain this image. Why? What are you hiding? Why not have transparency? I, I don't understand that. Um, you know, there are some things I'm private about. I don't share much about my personal relationship and, you know, struggles that we go through, but that's because there's someone else involved and I don't have his permission and it's not my business to share struggles that involve somebody else. When it's just me, I'll share openly, not a problem. Uh, so I don't understand, I don't understand this, uh, you know, having to have this certain image. It, I, don't, I don't get that. I understand having a brand, you know, she's in business for herself. I understand having a brand. I get that. Uh, but this maintaining of the image, it's just mm, something doesn't ring as authentic to me in that. Uh, 11 minutes in, we get more example of her projecting instead of taking ownership or responsibility. Um, and we see her using intimidation tactics. And it's quite remarkable. Uh, you know, if she's facilitating healing, why is she intimidating someone? Again, my mind does not comprehend. And then, and you see her inner circle being just wrapped around her finger. You know, they just, they bow to her. It's all about her and her needs. Um, and gosh, I, you know, I, I kind of feel for them. It's like, well, are you going to stand up for yourself? What about your needs? What about your part in this? Um, it's, it's quite remarkable to watch. All right. So then her ex-partner, Blake, actually decides to leave. And my assessment of this is that he's being very courageous in standing up for himself, standing up for his wife. Uh, it seems like a tremendous act of courage and bravery for him to leave her inner circle. And she accuses, of, she accuses him of being weak, lacking bravery, lacking honor, and choosing a weak path. Wow. <laughs> like, what is she seeing that I'm not seeing? You know, um, by this by this time in the documentary series, I'm just more and more convinced that she's not someone that I would want to follow or have in my inner circle or associate with. Uh, I, you know, I, again, trying to be neutral here and not judgmental. Um, but she's clearly showing herself over and over again. And I think editing can only do so much. I think she's shown us enough of herself uh, for me to say, oof, no thanks, not interested. Okay. She tells Blake, she says, and I quote, you're an effing absolute loser, always will be, never forget these words. <sighs> you guys, these are not words that would come from someone who wants to eliminate suffering. They are vindictive words. They're words meant to harm and hurt someone. They're not someone, and I get it, she's human, you know, she's gonna have her reactions just like we all do. But even in my most reactive, I never say stuff like that to somebody. I know better. That's a curse. She's casting a spell on him. Um, and then he, in his grace, says, love you, and he comes over and gives her a hug. Like, to me, that clearly shows where he's at, where she's at. Discern for yourself. All right, and then fourth episode, 27 minutes in, um, she's blaming him for leaving. She's, again, not taking any responsibility. Uh, and then... <laughs> You get to see her inner child. 
and you know this is why she makes herself a victim because she asks what should I have done to have him value me to have him love me more you know this is clearly the wounded part of her speaking this is clearly her you know wounded inner child and I just she says, I can't figure out what the F to change. And my response to that is, that's because you don't take feedback from anyone. When someone tries to give her feedback, we see it a few times in the docuseries where people have tried to give her feedback or ask her questions and she doesn't receive it. And so it's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to figure out what to change because you're not, you're saying everyone's a mirror for you, but you know, apparently she's the only one who's allowed to provide the mirror and no one else you know, can have that role for her. So, you know, I just have a lot of compassion because you very clearly see her woundedness there. <sighs> and then the inner circle is meeting because, you know, Blake has left and uh, what are we going to do to prevent these kinds of tragedies from happening? And um, they're, they're creating a contract together. And, and the women come up with this idea that they're not going to have any babies because bringing children in the mix makes things too complicated. It's too inconvenient for Teal because they all live in community. I guess they all live in the same house, which I understand. As a highly sensitive person, like I don't want a baby screaming at 3 a.m. in the morning, keeping me up, you know, and then I can't perform my functions the next day. So I, I get that. Uh, but it, what struck me was that these these women, Teal didn't suggest that. These women came up with it, and they didn't all seem totally comfortable with it, but they all agreed with it. And it just seemed like another instance of them being kind of wrapped around a finger, and everything's about her, and we're going to do what works for her. We're going to do what pleases her. Um, so all in all, you know, I, find, I found this docuseries very fascinating, and... Um, what I can say for sure is that the truth always comes out, you know, a light is always shined and illuminating situations. So whatever the truth is about Teal Swan, I believe it will be revealed. And, you know, the only reason I gave so much of my time and attention to this in the first place is because I think there are a lot of practitioners, spiritual lead, leaders, spiritual guides, people of that nature, who unfortunately lack integrity, who unfortunately, you know, steer people down the, the wrong path. And like I said in the beginning, my work is to guide people back to themselves, back to their own soul, back to their own wisdom, back to their own knowing. If I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my job correctly. And I don't want people to follow me, uh, even, <laughs> even from a business model. I'm not trying to get followers. I want community members because I want people in my community who will stand beside me, who will be pioneers alongside me, who will put their necks on the line for the cause of heaven on earth. Uh, I've, I've actually been accused of being a, a cult leader, which I think is kind of funny because <laughs> I don't really fit the definition of cult at all. Um, but, you know, I, I have compassion because I can see, you know, so as an example, I will be eventually stewarding a massive piece of land and there will be very specific frequencies on that land. So whether it's the people, the animals, the food that's grown, whatever it is, that land requires a very specific frequency. And so uh, when that comes into fruition, it may appear that I'm leading a cult, you know, because... It's just not going to work to have certain energies there. Uh, so I have a lot of compassion, you know, um, knowing someone's, knowing my own heart, but then having people look in from the outside, not really knowing my heart, you know, they could make a lot of assumptions or judgments. And so as I watch this docuseries, you know, I can see again, as I said in the beginning, clearly the editing is 
you know, slanted towards defamatory, towards steel. Um, only Teal knows her heart, you know, only she knows what she's about. Only she knows her mission and if the way she's executing her mission is in integrity for her, only she can know that. We, we can't judge and discern that. So while I've shared a lot of opinions and a lot of my red flags, what it comes down to is only Teal knows. And eventually, you know, the light will shine so bright on these types of situations that we'll know the truth too, you know? Maybe I'm wrong in some of my assessments. I'd love to be wrong about some of the things that I think that I, you know, saw in that docuseries. So I think the takeaway here is be discerning. You know, if you are looking for a spiritual guide or a practitioner, are these people in integrity in their everyday life? Do they walk their talk? You got to use your discernment, and I and that's hard, you know, when you are in crisis or when you are suffering and you can't see clearly anyway. It's hard to have that kind of discernment. And you know what? I think I did a video on that years ago. I have to look through my YouTube about how to find a, a spiritual practitioner. I'm not sure the title, but something along those lines. And I laid out some points for you to consider. So, you know, use your discernment. And uh, know your own truth, know your heart, know your heart, live your heart, and I think all, all will be revealed. So thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you all. Uh, thanks for being part of my channel. And I will have more Prime Creator videos coming eventually. So stay tuned, you guys. Much love.